All right, so, you know, quick history of, of, of chaos in general. You know, it's considered uh, dynamics, but it, it's, a, it's a branch of physics, really. Uh, beginning in the 1600s, when you have Newton, uh, who invented differential equations and the laws of motion, things of that nature. Um, and they tried to come up with uh, methods to solve the three-body problem, being the sun, the earth, and the moon, right? Uh, unfortunately, they basically came to the conclusion that it was maybe impossible to solve. Um, but then you have the breakthrough with Poincar in the 1800s, uh, who, who, who discovered that deterministic systems exhibit apriotic behavior that depends sensitively on initial conditions and where you get the, the term chaos sort of arises. And then sort of, you know, moving forward and you, you get into the 1950s and you have the, the high-speed computer, you are allowed to experiment with equations that people generally thought were impossible beforehand with so much computing power. Um, and then you have people like uh, Mr. Lorenz who, you know, he has his, his uh, infinite complex of surfaces and, you know, the generation of fractals um, and the the butterfly image would be the one that I'm referring to there. And then you move forward into the 70s and 80s and 90s, um, working in dynamics. Um, and, you know, you get Mandelbrot, uh, who founded fractals in particular. Um, and then by the 80s and 90s, you have widespread interest in chaos, fractals, oscillators, and all of their applications. And in this, in this video, you'll see an application. So, as I mentioned in the history of chaos, the, you have this unpredictable but deterministic behavior. And the observations are very varying unpredictably with uh, no foreseeable regularity. Um, and you might have an infinite number of periodic orbits as kind of demonstrated in this visual that I've drawn here. Um, but before I get into, you know, maybe Mathematica code for the tent map, um, or my Excel for image encryption and decryption. I just wanted to show you kind of what the dynamical system looks like, maybe what a bifurcation might look like, you know, as deemed here, the changes in behavior of the dynamical system. And then here is just very basically the generalized tent map is a piecewise function is mu times x sub n, and when x is less than or equal to x sub k. And uh, mu times 1 minus x sub n when x is greater than x sub k. And then the applications, in particular, I'm looking at image encryption, but communication systems, so anything with uh, signal, anything that, that's transmitting signal can be hidden, um, and uh, that private information can be can be coded and, 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 and made more secret uh, by using the random number generation seemingly from from certain initial conditions that make the tent map chaotic, just like the logistic map or others, and also has been applied to radar imaging and, and financial modeling as well. So you'll see some of that in the in the brief. All right, in this paper uh, by Aval and Associates. They found a simple method for image encryption using the logistic map, which I am going to base my use in Excel of image encryption with the tent map solely off of. Um, and uh, the big thing here was that they were able to propose a, a new method for image encryption based on chaotic maps, uh, replacing the image pixels and changing the gray level values uh, simul used simultaneously. Um, the proposed method um, is shown to, to, to work, to, to hide an image behind uh, the chaotic uh, random generation associated with the logistic map. And the hope is then to be able to apply it to the tent map or any other map that can, that's very sensitive to uh, initial conditions.
All right, so here you can see the tent map, and for mu, we've used a value of two. Uh, so the generalized tent map, you know, doesn't have a particular coefficient that you're using. But this, as we, you know, we did in class and we plotted you know, as a piecewise function, you can see the tent map. And as you scroll down, you can see that solving for fixed points, um, periodic points, and then you can see the periodic points. So as you do uh, t of t of x, and then plot it and moving forward, and then down below I changed mu, so change it to one, and it give you a different result. Changing it to 0.5, 1.5, and then also showing the periodic points if your mu is different. So this being with 1.5, obviously you're going to get some some changes there. So this just gives you a sort of a, a visualization of the tent map uh, moving forward before we get into the image encryption and decryption. Now that we have an understanding of the tent map, we can try to apply the random number generation in an effort to encrypt an image and then knowing the initial conditions on the tent map, we can then decrypt that same image on the other end. So when you're talking about a picture, you're thinking in shades of gray and you might have an 8-bit image which would come out to 256 possible pixels or possible color values. But in a black and white image, it's only one bit, so it's either, it's either black or it's white, so only two possibilities for color. So when you think of a picture and you think of it as an M by N matrix, it's going to have a certain number of pixels in the rows and columns, and each one will be represented by a one or a zero. And we can take going left to right across a row and then down to the next row until you finish the matrix, finish going through all the pixels in the image, you actually find uh, that you can get a string of ones and zeros, completely binary. So, in an effort to understand the tent map and how it can be used to form random numbers, I use the 0, 1 test to find out which value for mu and which value for x naught would give me the closest, the highest r squared value and a coefficient in the y equals mx plus b form that was closest to 1, meaning uh, most random. And I found that 0.48 for x naught and a mu, a mu of 1.99 gets me pretty close to 1 without actually using 2 as my value for mu. And so what I'll do, is, and it'll become more clear when I'm encrypting the photo, I'll use those values of the tent map to change the, the values of, of the ones and zeros that you're seeing for the image. So we'll go ahead and pull up a new sheet. And first thing you want to do is you want to do a random test. And we'll pull it down for a little while. And we, we need those values to stick, so we'll paste them in the next one over. But we'll just paste the values so that they're, they're stuck there. And then we need an... And we're going to say this is the, the original image. And because we don't have an actual black and white image to use, we use the random test uh, to generate the ones and zeros. So we'll say if the value is less than 0.5, we'll give it a zero. If not, we'll give it a one. And we'll send that all the way down. We can go get rid, get rid of this column. Don't need that there. Then we just want to end, so keeps track of everything, 0 to 1. OK. 
carry that all the way down. Oops. There we go. And so now we have the string of ones and zeros for what we're considering our original image. And then we'll, this is where we'll incorporate the uh, tent map. So over here we'll say, we, we'll give a mu and an x naught. We said our mu was 1.99, x naught was 0 0.48. All right, so, pardon me. So, for x naught, we need it to reference 0.48. And then, we need to fit in the if statement here. So if x not oh, equal sign that would help. If x not is less than 0.5, we'll say mu times x not, or else we'll say mu times 1 minus x not. And close that in. And then here we'll do the binary form of the tent map. So if this is less than 0.5, we'll give it a 0. If not, we'll give it a 1. And we'll send that all the way down. And then in the next column, we can create a z sub n, and this will be the combination of g sub n and y sub n. So the original with the tent map version. And it's mod 2 because we want it to, to equal either 0 or 1. So anytime you have 1 plus 1 and it goes greater than 1, it's going to go to 0. 0 and 1 is 1, etc. And shuffle that all the way down. And then you have your decryption, which reverses what we just did. So in this case, we'll do the mod of y sub n, which is the image that you can see that's scrambled from the tent map, um, minus Uh, z sub n, which you know, and also with mod 2. And that will give you your new string, and then just to check it, we will do the absolute value, well, it doesn't really matter in this case, but we'll take the original and subtract the decrypted column and we should get all zeros if we've correctly decrypted the encrypted image. And we do. And that is how you take the original image in binary terms in ones and zeros. You create a the tent map based on initial conditions and give it ones and zeros based on the if statement. And then use a modifier to add the two together to get a, an encrypted image, which is the Z sub n. So that's the image you can see. I'm sorry if I referenced it incorrectly earlier. The image you can see, and then Y sub n you can find using the tent map. And then decrypting it is the subtraction of the two. 
um, in order to to see the correct ones and zeros that that match the original image.